video is for the axle peg for the miniature train project. The first thing we're going to need to do is start a sketch on our XY plane. And we're going to add in a line that we need to select our center line. And we're going to have this line going straight up. Make sure you click on the center line again so it's no longer selected. Click on dimension and we're going to get our height for this line. So this is actually broken into two parts. So we have our threaded section and then we have the head of the axle peg. So right here we can have our dimension for the head of the axle peg, which is 0 0.125. And if you've never read um, thread notations before, it might be a little bit hard to read this, but this last number here is for the length. So we know it together that's one inch and then plus our original reading for the head of it. So it's one inch plus 1.2, or sorry, 1.125. Okay, and then we're gonna press home. So now we wanna add in all of our straight lines. So we have one at the very top. Okay, that is for this little section right here. And now we're gonna add in the lines for this other section. So we're going to go click on our line tool again, go down to the very bottom. All right, so remember for these, we're not too worried about how these get placed and just make sure everything's at nice 90 degrees angles from each other. So we would have mentioned for here to here, and that's showing up as a diameter because we have a center line and I click the edge of our line, this very end and the center line, so it's popping up as a diameter. So that number we can find right here. So that's a quarter of an inch. And it lets us know that the very top of this is also flat. All right, so I got the center line again. So that one we're going back to our thread notation. So this first part is a quarter inch and that's for the diameter of our thread. So typing in a quarter inch. This part right here is for the length of the thread. So we have one inch. We're gonna go from here to here. That dimension is for this edge and that one is point four to two inches. And I know everything looks blue and locked in place, but we still need to dimension this line. Because right now it can't shift left or right, but it can still stretch up and down. So this dimension is right here. It's for this little flat edge right there. So that is 0 0.031. Okay. This is where we're gonna add in our arc. So I'm going to use the three-point arc. So also, you might want to zoom in here just so you can see what you're doing. So I'm clicking this edge, that edge. I'm going to just place it there. And now I can, um, you can either just take this dot and move it right to that center right there, or you can add the dimension in. Um, it shows up the same dimension either way. So it's up to you if you want to type the dimension in or just make sure you move the center point over to here. Okay. If you try to place the dimension in after dragging the center point over, it'll pop up with an error. Um, but you'll at least get to see that it is actually the dimension that's called for in the sketch. So now we can finish and revolve. So because we have that center line, it automatically selected everything we needed. So now we're going to add in a couple more components. So we're going to start a sketch on the top because we're going to add in this hex socket. And we need to use the polygon tool. And for this program, it's defaulted to six sides, which for us is useful because that's the number we actually want. So this I'm going to put just kind of at a slant just to show you what you want to do with this. Okay, And now you're going to use either the vertical or horizontal constraint for this. It um, doesn't really matter which one, you just want to make sure you line it up. And then you're going to do the dimension across the flat, so it means across two of the flat sides. And for that dimension, you can see here we have five 
30 seconds. So you can see that's blue, everything's locked in place. For the center of our polygon, we made sure it's locked to the center. We can finish, and we can extrude. All right, make sure you're making your extrusion into a cut. And we want this dimension to be 0.111. So that's three ones in a row, and then OK. The next thing we're going to want to do is add on a chamfer to this very edge right here. But because when we're looking at this one, we can see it's a 45, and our dimension is 0 0.03. So remember, that's 0 0.03. Um, on the video, I'm not sure if you can see that. There's a point right there. Okay. There's a couple ways to add this in. If you have two distances, you could use it that way. If you have a distance and an angle, you can do it this way. Or if you have the same distance for both of them, which would be a 45, um, you could do either of these two. So for our angle, we have 45 degrees. Our distance, we need to change that to 0 0.03. And we need to click on the face and then our edge. So you need to click on it in the correct order or else it's, the program is going to get confused. So you got to click on the very bottom of our axle peg and then the edge. Then you can click OK. And the last thing we need to do is add in our thread. So our thread is the tool that's underneath the whole tool for when you have the drop down menu. You can click on the section that you need the thread for. You want full length. And you just want to double check the specification. It automatically knows you want it to be a quarter inch because that's the diameter of the part you selected. Um, but it's not quite sure about the rest of the stuff. It kind of guessed. And it happens to be the one that we need, which is lucky for us. So we have 20 threads per inch and it's coarse thread. And we can click OK. Now we have our completed axle peg.